Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And the world we're thrown into in Fallout 4 is a dangerous one. One riddled with the still lingering consequences and calamities of the Earth's near total atomic annihilation. It's a place littered with chaos in every corner. But the wasteland that was once the US of A is also a land of much mystery. Why are so many children of Adam immune to radiation? What was the purpose of the vaults? What is the Institute's end game? Some of these questions will eventually be explained away throughout normal gameplay. However, many inquiries Fallout leaves us with are left entirely unaddressed, which just makes them all the more intriguing. So today we'll be exploring some of the most fascinating things that Fallout 4 leaves us asking, as we take a look at five more Fallout 4 mysteries. Part 4 Starting off, we have the curious case of Lucy Grandchester. We learn about this demented and likely ghostly little girl at the Grandchester Mystery Mansion in Nuka World. It's a haunted house exhibition that was meant to cater towards Nuka World's more daring consumers. When we visit for the first time, much to our surprise, we'll find the place still fully operational, and the robotic staff outside happy to sell us tickets and offer us the chance to tour the structure. Upon entry, a ghostly pre-recorded narrator will greet us and begin to take us through the place, commenting on the building's dark past. It was once the home to the troubled Grandchester family, who for years were tormented by their deranged daughter, Lucy, whose ghost is said to be actively haunting the premises. As the tour continues and the narrator reveals more and more long-ago atrocities committed by Lucy, we'll have to face off against a number of malfunctioning robots. And, out of the corner of our eyes, we'll occasionally see a little girl watching us from afar. Not only that, bloodstains and corpses can also be found tucked away in closets. Is this place more than just a tourist attraction? Is Lucy more than just a legend? As the tour concludes, the narrator will state that the Grandchester family story ended after Lucy murdered them all to death and took her own life. Not exactly a Disney ending, but I digress. In one of the final rooms, we'll be confronted by an ex-gunner named Zachariah, whom we'll have to defeat. His personal terminal, which lies in the same room, divulges the fact that he's responsible for the robots attacking us and the bodies. He moved into this place and turned it into his own private fortress after ditching the gunner some time ago, and has been using the locals' fear of Lucy as a means of keeping people away and his robotic army as a defense of last resort. Ah, so mystery solved, right? There's no ghost, it's all just been Zachariah this whole time. Those dead bodies and robots we were pit against were the work of him, not some phantom. Should have known, right? Well, Zachariah's terminal also contains some disturbing entries. Some of his robots would occasionally just start laughing maniacally like a little girl. And wait a minute, what were those visions of that small child we kept seeing earlier? Surely those weren't Zachariah's doing. Indeed, if we forge ahead and pick the lock into the attic, we'll see the spirit of Lucy one final time, dart behind some shelves past a door. And if we open that door, it will lead to nowhere. My god, this place really is haunted. Lucy's ghost is real. Now the question is, how? Well, ghosts and the paranormal are far from fiction in the Fallout franchise. In Fallout 2, we even complete a quest for, and directly communicate with, the ghost of Anna Winslow, a woman whose spirit was awoken after a scavenger stole a locket off of her corpse, and she'll ask for us to get it back. In Fallout 3, we can hear eerie voices and watch as items are flung from tables and shelves at the Dunwich building. So Lucy's ghostly existence is far from impossible, though that would make her the only confirmed evil spirit we cross paths with in the universe. Though what caused her spirit to remain tied to the mortal world? Was she perhaps just too evil for any afterlife to accept her? Some unfinished business, perhaps? 
we may never know. Though, unlike Zachariah, I'm not interested in staying around any longer. I don't want to wait to find out. Next on our list is a mysterious mystery that's perplexed Vault Dwellers since the inception of the Fallout franchise. I, of course, am speaking of the mysterious stranger. A man of unknown origins, who, provided you have the appropriate perk, has a small chance to appear when the sole survivor enters vats, and aid you in finishing off foes before disappearing. Simply put, what's this guy's deal? What are his origins? How does he keep popping out of nowhere? And where is he when we don't see him? Well, while he's appeared in quite literally every single Fallout title since the beginning, in Fallout 4, we for the first time learn that we're not the only ones aware of his existence. Nor are we alone in asking these questions. As, believe it or not, the Valentine Detective Agency is on the case. Though, they don't seem to be having any more luck than we are. Within the synthetic cop's office, hidden, tucked away just below a bed, is a case file, titled Mysterious Stranger. In it, Nick describes the character we all know, profiling him as some amoral lunatic that's been plaguing the wasteland for years now, mentioning sightings not only in the Commonwealth, but also the Capital Wasteland, the Mojave Wasteland, as well as Shady Sands. Subtle nods to the stranger's appearances in previous Fallout titles. Valentine notes his fascination with the stranger's strange pre-war getup, and theorizes that he could be a ghoul with minimal scarring, or that it could be multiple men masquerading under the same persona. How else could he be in so many places over all these years? Alas, at the end of the day, Nick seems as baffled as we are. However, he does offer some interesting commentary. The fact that he only mentions the mysterious stranger appearing in locations Fallout games have taken place implies that the mysterious stranger may exclusively serve the protagonist of the games. Otherwise, you'd expect to hear about him in other places too. Additionally, the suggestion that the stranger could in fact be multiple men, rather than just one, is another perplexing thought. It's fairly obvious he's not a ghoul, but in Fallout 4 he does don a somewhat different, more mature appearance, now rocking a mustache and an older look. Normally I'd chalk something like this up to the products of age, however seeing as he's appeared in Fallout 1, which takes place over 120 years prior to the events of Fallout 4, You'd think he'd be running around with a cane by now. One popular community theory birthed out of Fallout 4 is that he could be some kind of prototype courser for the Institute gone awire. Others have connected him to the Lonesome Drifter, a character in Fallout New Vegas who was abandoned by his father at a young age, and describes his old pa as being both mysterious and a stranger. It's suspected by many that he's the iconic character's son. No matter, after five Fallout titles, it seems we're no closer to figuring out who the mysterious stranger really is. Maybe some questions are just better left unanswered. Coming at number three, who is Deacon? Okay, well that's pretty easy, he's a senior member of the railroad and a potential follower known for his tendency to take up disguises and secretive nature. But more specifically, what's his backstory? Where did he come from and what are his motivations that have caused him to become so devoted to the railroad? His complete rejection of any transparency makes Deacon among the most mysterious people we work with. We know next to nothing about his upbringing prior to joining the faction. Not necessarily because he won't tell us anything, but because he's a pathological liar, who when asked about his history, will often just make up different stories that conflict with each other. At one point in the game, he'll confide to us that he's an escaped synth, looking to help others find their freedom as well. Then later on, change his mind and decide he actually used to run with a gang of synth hunters, but changed his ways after losing the love of his life. Scratch that, you know, he was actually with the Minutemen. You get the idea, he lies a lot. And Deacon freely admits this. He says he lies to everyone, and just asks that you don't take it personally. 
furthermore, the man becomes even more suspect when you realize that he's been following the sole survivor since you left Vault 111. Upon your first visits to Diamond City, Bunker Hill, and Good Neighbor, Deacon, believe it or not, can be seen in disguises blending in with the locals, just watching you, long before you've even dabbled with the main quest line. And there's even a small outpost players can discover overlooking Vault 111, with an Ally Railroad Rail sign marker etched into it. He's been following you for a very long while, which makes it all the more noteworthy when later on in the game, upon our first meeting with the railroad underneath the Old North Church, Deacon, despite us not knowing who he is, vouches on our behalf, saying he's got a good feeling. But of course, we all know he's been paying attention to us for quite some time. Now, we're not the only ones who want to make inquiries about Deacon's past. Some of the railroad's own membership, including its leaders, have explored this question themselves. Tinker Tom, the faction's go-to guy for all things science, has a terminal, with an entry filled with random theories he's had over the years. And one of them is that Deacon might be a time traveler. This suggestion isn't elaborated on at all, nor is there any evidence to back it up. It's just something Tinker Tom evidently thinks might be possible. And within the railroad's leadership access records, a specific terminal entry containing the personal journals of the railroad's various leaders since the 2260s, which were only allowed to view after completing the main quest line and having sided with the faction, Desdemona mentions that Deacon's been here since even before she has, and she's clueless to his backstory. Though hypothesizes that he could be John D, an influential figure that helped the faction rebuild in 2266 after their old headquarters was raided, and he was among the only survivors. If that's true, if Deacon was or is John D, then he would have had to been serving for over 20 years at the least. Whatever his real story is, one thing is known. Deacon definitely doesn't want you to find out. For Fourth Spawn is a mystery not quite as personal, but definitely still very fascinating. Who built the Milton Parking Garage maze and why? The Milton Parking Garage is an unmarked location just a ways west of the Milton Hospital. From the outside, it appears to be a perfectly normal building. But upon entry, we realize that couldn't be further from the truth. In actuality, it's a massive, complex maze, littered with a plethora of puzzles, lethal traps, and the remains of its victims. If you're somehow able to navigate this confusing gauntlet and survive, you'll get to enter one of your pick of two treasure rooms. The other one will be destroyed by fire. It's pretty cool. No matter what crazy soul on earth built this place, and what were the reasons for doing so, the Milton community is a major super mutant hotspot. Though so much of this structure is just far too intricate for mutants to have ever come up with. Besides, they're simple, brutal folk. If they were able to create something like this, it's unlike them to offer rewards and not explain themselves. And quite frankly, the same can be said for the game's general raider population. So whoever the architect of this place is, and they're probably still maintaining it, the place is pretty clean and well kept must be a person of some considerable level of intelligence. The complex also seems to contain a bedroom of sorts where someone was living out of, so it's likely a normal human being. Well, maybe not normal, but you get the idea. Someone very weird has designed this place, and it looks like we'll never know for sure who. And finally, last on our list, is another mystery that, much like the mysterious stranger, transcends Fallout 4 and is relevant in any Fallout game. Aliens. While wandering the wastes of the Commonwealth, once in any given playthrough, it's possible to witness a flying saucer dart across the sky before crashing off in the distance. Following the smoke trail will lead us to a stunning UFO crash site. From the debris, another trail, not of smoke, but green blood can be detected, leading us to a small, dimly lit cave. 
Within it, an injured alien will make his final stand, attacking the sole survivor with a powerful laser pistol that, if you manage to defeat the extraterrestrial invader in combat, you can take for yourself. And that'll be that. The game makes zero effort to elaborate further on what's happened here or who this little green man was. Thankfully, we can look to previous Fallout installments for some extra context. However, even they don't provide us all the answers. In Fallout 1, the Vault Dweller could encounter a downed flying saucer with two alien skeletons in the wasteland. Later on in Fallout 3, the Lone Wanderer could find a downed alien spacecraft, with the corpse of an extraterrestrial similar to the one we meet in Fallout 4, who also carries an alien blaster. And of course, Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC centered around the player's abduction by what seems to have been the same alien race, and you'd have to fight your way off their aircraft in order to get back home. Well, actually, you'd take it over, but that's another story. Nonetheless, throughout the Fallout franchise, it appears to be the same alien species interfering with mankind. And in that Mothership Zeta DLC, we can even meet an abducted samurai from the 17th century. So they've been meddling in human affairs since, at minimum, the 1600s. But why? What's with their fascination for mankind? Do they have plans? Are they just studying us like we do uncontacted tribes? If so, they're doing a pretty bad job at the whole uncontacting part. One theory is that these aliens may be the same ones we learn about in the Cabot family questline. Lorenzo Cabot, a former archaeologist who, during a dig in the 1800s, discovered a supernatural helmet that's granted he and those who drink his blood immortality, tells us of ancient aliens who acted as a predecessor to human civilization and served as a guiding hand throughout our evolution. Could these be those aliens? Could these little green men actually be on our side at the end of the day? Well, only the aliens know, and the aliens aren't talking. At least, not in discernible English. Anyway, on that note we are going to wrap up. Five more mysteries in Fallout 4, installment number 4. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Which of the inquiries we explored today did you find to be the most fascinating? What are your own theories potentially explaining some of what we discussed? And what mysteries should I cover next? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.